Hello and welcome. In this video, we will work on packet tracer activity 4.6.5, connect a wired and wireless LAN. Let's start with the objectives. Part 1, connect to the cloud. Part 2, connect router 0. Part 3, connect remaining devices. Part 4, verify connections. And part five, examine the physical topology. Background. When working in Packet Tracer, a lab environment or a corporate setting, you should know how to select the appropriate cable and how to properly connect devices. This activity will examine device configurations in Packet Tracer, selecting the proper cable based on the configuration and connecting the devices. This activity will also explore the physical view of the network in Packet Tracer. Instructions Part 1 Connect to the cloud. Step 1 Connect the cloud to router 0. A. At the bottom left, click the orange lightning icon to open the available connections. B. Choose the correct cable to connect router 0, F00 to Cloud Ethernet 6. Cloud is a type of switch, so use a copper straight through connection. If you attach the correct cable, the link lights on the cable turn green. Let's begin with that. Let me just adjust this. So it's said here to connect router 0 to the cloud and use a copper straight through connection. So we go to the lightning icon here or the connections and we choose a copper straight through which is this one as indicated here. Let's click on that and let's go to router 0 and connect it to fast ethernet 00. zero. And then to the cloud to Ethernet 6. So that looks good. Now let's move to step 2. Connect the cloud to cable modem. Choose the correct cable to connect cloud coax 7 to modem port 0. If you attach the correct cable, the link lights on the cable turn green. So for step two, we use a coaxial cable. So let's go back to the connections again and let's look for the coaxial cable. Oh, wait. Okay. So here is the coaxial cable. Let's click on that. And we start from the cloud. Oh, actual seven to the modem port zero. Cable modem port zero. Okay, good. Now let's move to part two. Part two, connect router zero. Step one, connect router zero to router one. Choose the correct cable to connect router 0, serial 000, to router 1, serial 00. Use one of the available serial cables. If you attach the correct cable, the link lights on the cable turn green. So let's do that. So here are the choices that we have. We have serial DCE and serial DTE. You could choose either one, but I usually prefer this one unless instructed. So let's click on the serial DCE and let's connect router zero, serial zero, 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 which is this one, to router one, serial zero, zero. Okay, now let's move to step two. 
connect router 0 to netaka.pka. Choose the correct cable to connect router 0, fast Ethernet 0 01, to netaka.pka F0. Routers and computers traditionally use the same wires to transmit 1 and 2 and receive 3 and 6. The correct cable to choose consists of these crossed wires. Although many NICs can now autosense which pair is used to transmit and receive, Router0 and NetAka.pka do not have autosense in NICs or network interface cards. Before we proceed, I would like to clarify what some of you may be wondering. Why do we use a crossover cable between router 0 and the netaka.pka server when they are two different types of devices? To reiterate, the answer to that is because routers and computers traditionally use the same wires to transmit, which are wires 1 and 2, and receive, which use wires 3 and 6. So in this illustration, if a router has data to send and uses the T568A standard, the one on the left, the server or computer on the other end should have the T568B standard on its end because it uses wires 3 and 6 to receive the data sent by the router. While today's NICs or network interface cards have auto MDIX, which detects the cable type being used to function properly, the concept of using crossover cables is still useful, especially in your certification exams. Now let's go back to the activity. Let's click on the copper crossover. Attach router 0, fast Ethernet 0, 1, to net active PKA, fast Ethernet 0. The lights are green, so that means we are good. Now let's move to step 3. Connect router 0 to the configuration terminal. Choose the correct cable to connect router 0 console to configuration terminal. RS232. This cable does not provide network access to configuration terminal, but allows you to configure router 0 through its terminal. If you attach the correct cable, the link lights on the cable turn black. Let's click on the console cable here, which is the light blue one, and then Let's connect router 0, the console port, to the configuration terminal here, and select RS232. As you can see, these are the link lights that was mentioned, and it is black, so this is correct. Now let's move to part 3. Part 3, connect remaining devices. Step 1. Connect router 1 to switch. Choose the correct cable to connect router F10 to switch F01. If you attach the correct cable, the link lights on the cable turn green. Allow a few seconds for the light to transition from amber to green. Okay, let's do that. For this one, I believe we use a Fiber connection. Now let's go to router 1. As you can see, here is fast Ethernet 1, 0, and it has a different icon from the other fast Ethernets, which looks like a port for an RJ45. So this indicates that this is a fiber connection. Let's click on that. And then let's go to switch and connect this to port F01, which is this one. 
let's click on that and let's move to step two connect cable modem to wireless router choose the correct cable to connect cable modem part one to wireless router internet port if you attach the correct cable the link lights on the cable will will turn green so we will be working on the cable modem here to the wireless router so let's click on copper straight through and it says here cable modem port one to wireless router internet port here's the internet port so it works now let's move to step three connect wireless router to family pc choose the correct cable to connect wireless router ethernet one to family pc if you attach the correct cable the link lights on the cable turn green for this one we will also be using a copper straight through And then from the wireless router, Ethernet 1, we connect it to the family PC, fast Ethernet 0. Now it's red for now because, because it is still recognizing the wireless router. As you can see here, from the connection from router 1 to switch, this part right here changed color from amber, red or amber, to now to a green triangle. So we will just wait for this one. And on Q, it has changed its color from red to green. Now let's move to part four. Part four, verify connections. Step one. Test the connection from family PC to netacad.pka. Open the family PC command prompt and ping netacad.pka. B. Open the web browser and the web address netacad.pka. So let's do that. Let's open family PC here. Family PC. And let's go to desktop and open a command prompt. So we're supposed to ping netaka.pka. Ping net, uh, netaka.pka. Now, while waiting for that, let us also access the web browser and access HTTP colon double slash netacad.pka. As you can see, the website works. There's not much to see here, but the connection is there. Now let's go back to the command prompt. As you can see, the connection, or the ping rather, is successful. We received pings from the target host, which is netaka.pka. Now let's close this, and let's move to step two. Ping the switch from home PC. Open the home PC command prompt and ping the switch IP address to verify the connection. So let's open the home PC here. And let's go to the command prompt. Now it says to ping the switch, switch IP address. And the switch IP address, let's go back up. The switch IP address is 172.16.0.2. So let's do that. Ping 
16.0.2. Enter. Let's go down back here. Let's wait for a moment. And we now have a connection or we have successful ping. Let's try it again. Should be 100% this time. Okay, so everything is good. Let's move to step three. Open router zero from configuration terminal. Okay, let's open the configuration terminal. Letter A, open the terminal of configuration terminal and accept the default settings. Let's go to terminal. And these are the default settings. So let's click OK. Now next, press Enter to view the router zero command prompt. There you go. So we pressed Enter. And then next, show IP interface brief to, sh to view interface statuses. So let's type show IP interface brief. Let's expand this for a proper display. So as you can see, fast ethernet 00 and fast ethernet 01 are up, as well as serial 000. It is also up. Now let's move to part five. Examine the physical topology. Part five. Examine the physical topology. Step one. Examine the cloud. A. Click the physical workspace tab or press shift plus P and shift plus L to toggle between the logical and physical workspaces. So let's do that. We could choose to click on the physical here or press shift plus P. So let's click on this. Click the home city icon. The home city icon is this one as indicated by this. So let's click on this. Click the cloud icon. So here's the cloud icon. So it asks here how many wires are connected to the switch in the blue rack. So this is the blue rack here. As you can see, there's nothing else below. Now let's try to zoom in to have a better view of how many cables or wires are connected. And as you can see, there are two. Here is one and here is two. This one is the coaxial cable that we connected earlier. And this is the fast Ethernet 00, zero connection. Now let's go back to home city. Now step two, examine the primary network. Click the primary network icon. Hold the mouse pointer over the various cables. What is located on the table to the right of the blue rack? So let's go to primary network, which is this one right here. Let's click on that. Let's zoom out for a moment. Hold the mouse pointer over the various cables. Okay, let's zoom in here just a moment. So you have here the fast Ethernet 01 console cable, fast Ethernet 00, and serial connection.
Now it asks here what is located on the table to the right of the blue rack. Let me just zoom out so you can see. So this is the complete setup. So this is the table that is being asked. So as you can see, this is the configuration terminal. This one right here. Click back to return to home city. So let's do that. Step three, examine the secondary network. Click the secondary network icon. Hold the mouse pointer over the various cables. Let's do that. Here's the secondary network. And let's zoom in to see the cables here. As you can see, we have a serial connection and then a fast Ethernet connection. Is there anything else? Nope, that's just it. Why are there two orange cables connected to each device? The answer to that is because fiber cables come in pairs. One is used to transmit data and the other is used to receive data. While it is not shown very well in the activity, fiber cables come in pairs, one for transmitting data and the other for receiving data. As you can see in this slide, there are two connectors at each end of the cables. Now, just in case you are wondering what SC, LC, and ST mean, let us look at the next image. So ST stands for straight tip connectors, SC stands for subscriber connector, and LC means lucent connector, which has two types, the simplex connectors and the duplex multimode LC connectors. Now, a yellow jacket is made for single mode fiber cables and the orange one, or aqua, for multimode fiber cables. Now let's go back to the activity. Step four, examine the home network. Click the home network icon. Why is there no rack to hold the equipment? The answer to that is because home networks usually don't have racks. If you have one at home, you're special. So let's go. So click the logical workspace tab to return to the logical topology. And that is the end of our video. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please consider subscribing to the channel so you would be updated if there's a new video that came up. Again, I would like to thank you and have a great day.